In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'd like to uh, speak to you about penance today, and to do so, I'd like to share two documents, two pontifical documents, one by St. John the 23rd, and another one by St. Paul the 6th, both on this subject of penance in the life of a Christian. Jumping right into it, St. John the 23rd tells us, and this is a document from 1962, Penitentia Magere, so on doing penance. The Pope tells us that Jesus did not begin his mission by revealing the principal truths of the faith. That's not how he begins. Instead, he first insisted that the soul must repent of every trace of sin that could render it impervious to the message of eternal salvation. Jesus begins by preaching penance by removing the obstacles to the message of salvation to the gospel that he's about to preach from that time jesus began to uh to preach and to say do penance for the kingdom of heaven is at hand to be ready for the kingdom we need, must first do penance so first the purpose of doing penance and again uh just to not make this too tedious i'll be quoting paraphrasing not always referencing my sources but the sources are the, these two very good pontifical documents so what is the purpose of penance so first and foremost to dispose the soul to the message of eternal salvation we just said that but then there are other purposes to penance that we find in, in the scriptures in the revealed word of god so we fast we do penance and we apply physical discipline in order to chastise one's own soul, to humble oneself in the sight of his own God, we do that, to turn one's face toward God, to dispose oneself to prayer, to understand more intimately the things which are divine, and to prepare oneself for the encounter with God. These are all reasons and purposes for which a Christian does penance. <coughs> penance is a religious personal act which has as its aim love and surrender to God. Fasting for the sake of God, doing penance for the sake of God, not for our own sake. All right? So the purpose, love and surrender to God. And also, the necessity of the mortification of the flesh stands clearly revealed if we consider the fragility of our nature, in which since Adam sinned, flesh and spirit have contrasting desires. They are at enmity and in a constant battle and it's with penance that we subdue the flesh the disordered desires of the flesh mortification aims at liberation of man who often finds himself because of concupiscence almost chained by his own senses through corporal fasting man regains strength and the wound inflicted on the dignity of our nature by intemperance is cured by the medicine of salutary abstinence so mortification and penance uh, fortifies the spirit by mortifying the flesh and its sensuality it basically makes our bodies obedient to our souls and our souls obedient to god that perfect order body obedient to soul as it should be but it always it's not always that way so we need to again mortify it and then soul the higher faculties obedient to god so who is this for who has to do penance St. John the 23rd says that a rude awakening is in store for the person who thinks that penance is necessarily necessary only for those who are still aspiring to membership in the kingdom of God, for those who are still outside and trying to get in. It's not only for them. He who is already a member of Christ must learn of necessity to keep a rein upon himself as well. Only so will he be able to drive away the enemy of his soul and keep his baptismal innocence unsullied or regain God's grace when it is lost by sin. The Code of Canon Law tells us that the divine law binds all the Christian faithful to do penance each in his or her own way. Right, so it's for all of us. 
for those who are not yet members of the kingdom to dispose themselves to enter. For those who are already members and who are in a state of innocence, let's say, to keep their innocence. For those who are members and who have lost their innocence, to regain it for everybody, penance. Penance is internal and external. Internal penance is the primary form of penance. And internal penance leads to sacramental penance, so confession. John 23rd says, our first need is for internal penance, the one that's, again, obviously inside of us, that then motivates the external mortifications. The detestation of sin, that is, and the determination to make amends for it. This is the repentance shown by those who make a good confession, who take part in the Eucharistic sacrifice and who receive Holy Communion worthily. Because external acts of penance are quite obviously useless unless accompanied by a clear conscience and the detestation of sin. So, interior first and foremost, then we can talk about exterior acts of penance, such as fasting and, and, uh, and, and other disciplines and corporeal, corporal punishments. So, exterior penance. The faithful, besides interior penance, must also be encouraged to do outward acts of penance, both to keep their bodies under the strict control of reason and faith, and to make amends for their own and other people's sins. St. Augustine said, with a warning, it is not enough for a man to change his ways for the better and to give up the practice of evil, unless by painful penance, sorrowing humility, the sacrifice of a contrite heart, and the giving of alms, he makes amends to God for all that he has done wrong. Penance is a way to, again, make amends to God, make a reparation to God for all that we have done wrong, even after it's been forgiven, because sin always leaves a disorder, a mess within us and around us. And penance is the reparation for that disorder within us and around us. So now concrete ways of doing penance. External penance includes particularly the acceptance from God in a spirit of resignation and trust all of life's sorrows and hardships and everything that involves inconvenience and annoyance in the conscious performance of the obligation of our daily life and work and the practice of Christian virtue. Penance of this kind is in fact inescapable. The acceptance of the difficulty of life, the difficulty of the Christian life, the suffering that comes with it, the suffering that comes with being faithful to our duties. All of that is the primary and inescapable penance that we must offer to God. How do we offer it? By accepting it. What's the opposite of accepting? Complaining, grumbling, interiorly rebelling. Oh, I wish it wasn't so cold and snowy today. I don't want it to be this way today. Well, you're going to waste a day that could have been a lot of merit. So yes, Lord, if you made it snow today. I want it. Whatever, get the snow off my car, shovel the snow off my driveway, salt, whatever. I want to do this as penance. That's the first and inescapable uh, penance that we can't waste. More on this subject. And the virtue of penitence must be exercised in persevering faithfulness to the duties of one's state in life. Again, the acceptance of the difficulties that are involved in it. And patient bearing of the trials of earthly life. And the utter insecurity which pervades it. Wow. Accepting the fact that we are not God. And that's a penance for us human beings who'd like to be in control of everything and have security in everything. Just that, accepting that insecurity of life. Those members of the church who are stricken by infirmities, illnesses, poverty or misfortunes, or who are persecuted for the love of justice are invited to unite their sorrows to the suffering of Christ in such a way that they not only satisfy more thoroughly the precept of penitence, but also obtain for their brethren a life of grace, and for themselves that beatitude which is promised in the gospel to those who suffer. Offering infirmities, illnesses, poverty, misfortunes of life. How? By uniting it to Christ and saying, okay, Lord, for as long as this lasts, I wish to face this situation. I wish to endure it for you. But besides bearing in a Christian spirit the inescapable annoyances and suffering of this life, the faithful ought also to take the initiative in doing voluntary acts of penance and offering them to God. So on top of all that, which is already a challenge, already difficult, right? Imagine that, not complaining about anything, 
and accepting everything from God. That would already be heroic virtue. That's already, aim for that, all right? Aim for that resolution. A aim, for that, uh, aim for that virtue. It's not of little importance. In fact, it's, it's primarily important. But on top of that, we're invited to offer voluntary penances, so in inflict sufferings upon ourselves that we wouldn't, other we wouldn't otherwise suffer. These are the voluntary mortifications that we see in the lives of the saints, especially of the senses, taste, touch, hearing, sight, all the senses. We can mortify our taste but by not eating the foods that we like and eating the foods that we dislike, all right? Or not eating as much as we would like. That's a mortification. It clearly keeps the body obedient to the soul. Touch, uh, so many different ways. I mean, sit in a chair that's less comfortable that you'd like. Uh, you know, assume a posture that's less comfortable that you'd like. All of these ways of, of keeping the body obedient to us and not being slaves of the body. Hearing, um, sometimes mortifying yourself from listening to music that is otherwise good and innocent. Mortifying ourselves from useless words and conversations and curiosity, all of that. Sight, wow, there's so many ways to mortify the sight. Don't look, again, curiosity and sight. The saints always tell us this, when you're in church, look at our Lord, look at the tabernacle. Who cares who just walked in? Unless, again, somebody needs help, of course, <laughs> look and help. But otherwise, don't be distracted. Mortify your sight. Focus on God. Don't click on that whatever that, that comes up on, on your phone or on your computer. Mortify the curiosity there. Limit yourself to the amount of time that you dedicate to the internet, to television, etc. All ways, very good ways, very helpful ways to do voluntary penance. And Paul VI also says lastly, the precept of penitence must be satisfied in a more perfect way by priests, by religious and by all those who seek the perfection of charity. So in this category, we could put the members of the Franciscan Third Order and the MIM. So these are persons that impose upon themselves a mortified way of life so as to reach the perfection of charity more speedily, more surely. These are encouraged to be faithful to that state of life, to that calling, to that way of life that they have chosen for themselves for their own sake and for the sake of the church. John the 23rd concludes, again, and we, in concluding, we go back to that first statement, that opening statement of this sermon. Again, Jesus did not begin his mission by revealing the principal truths of the faith. That came later. The beginning of his mission was that call to conversion and to penance. First, he insisted that the soul must repent of every trace of sin that could render it impervious to the message of eternal salvation. The more we do that, the more we repent, meaning we turn away from creatures and to God, well, the more God will draw us to himself and communicate himself to us. It's a very simple equation. The more we turn away from creatures and turn to God, well, the more God will give himself to us. If he sees that that's what we want, if we seek not the creatures that he has given us, even, if, even though they'd be good, if we turn away from them and turn to him, he will turn to us, give himself to us, give us grace, salvation, and holiness. So let's accept we primarily, Christians, Catholic Christians, MIA members, third order members, let's accept for ourselves and respond to our Lord's call to do penance for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.